That's the smooth, soulful, and jazzy stylings of the Peter Cat Recording Company. The Delhi-based band has just touched down in New Zealand where they're going to play their first three Kiwi shows. We found them in Raglan, so let's let them introduce themselves to you. Um, yeah, my name is Surya Kant. Um, uh, I'm the singer in the band. I also write a lot of the music and I right. perform on the guitar. Right. Hi, my name is Rohit and uh, I play uh, trumpet and keyboard in the band. Same. Uh, my name is Karthik. And I play trumpet and guitar and little harmonium. Nice one. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for getting up early and doing this. So it's uh, three of the five members of the band. Tell me who, about the other two, since they're not here, we can talk about them. Well, uh, this should be here. Well, one's a drummer. Right. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> he's 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 generally a late one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And our basis should be right along. Um, okay. Yeah. And here he is. Very good. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and <there he's> gone. <laughs> so is this your first time in New Zealand or have you been here before? Uh, yeah, it's the first time for all of us in New Zealand. Very exciting. All right. And you just came back from, you did a festival in Sydney, right? In, in Australia? Uh, yeah, we did two nights at a, at the Sydney Festival. Right. In Sydney. That's a good place for it. Yeah. How was it? I mean, I, I've heard a little bit about it, the festival itself, but I don't know know a lot more other than that. It's a lot of different stuff happening, right? Yeah, uh, I think it's like a city-wide festival and... Um, yeah, it's one of those sort of I want to do it with you. many things happening oh. around the city festival. And right. we were one of the events. And uh, it was nice because we sold out both nights. Yes, and, nice. uh, and, and so for folks who aren't familiar with you, because it is your first time here, I know you guys have been together as a band for about 10 years or or even a little bit longer than that. So, And you have a very diverse sound. How do you de How do you describe that to uh, the uninitiated? Uh, with an amateur jazz band. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the best kind, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think that, that that ends up summing a lot of... Otherwise, it gets into all these like deep genre diving sort of things. And yeah, this is okay. sort of an amateur band. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, so with the jazz band and nomenclature in mind, how, how did you start hearing jazz? What what What's... Or it, what musical acts kind of connected with you guys first to make you want to be musicians and form this band? Uh, I think it's different for everybody. Sure. Uh, but I'm happy to hear from each one of you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, for me, I guess it was just, uh, it wasn't necessarily listening to specifically jazz, but a lot of music which was itself inspired by jazz right uh you know like a lot of film soundtracks some bands back in the day a lot of bollywood music there's always some sort of integration of like this this bra the way they use brass right instruments or the way you know like swing was a hefty part of the music because i also like a lot of old films and stuff so it just felt like one of the uh kinds of music which called out to me at least and I really enjoyed the aesthetic of it um, and uh, yeah I just felt like this was as a as a songwriter I felt like this could be a good starting point for the kind of music I wanted to write right right okay let's... otherwise I listen to everything honestly <laughs> fair enough and what about you guys down there and the, the three of you <laughs> um, pretty much the same um, in terms of I think where I started getting seriously into music was more alternative bands and uh, even classical music, like Western classical music, and then stuff like Mr. Bungle. Mr. Bungle, oh, really? Kind of stuff. Um, and event, like, and for a trumpet, a brass based music, it was mostly like Balkan music, which really got me interested in the, in, in the instrument in the first place. Right. Okay. Next over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me also, I mean, I kind of uh, played like a bit of traditional jazz on piano and uh, uh, trumpet. Yeah. You know, and um, 
but apart from that yeah even i listen to everything i, I listen to like a lot of different folk music you know and uh, okay. and i like the fact that in our, in in this group we have like a d- interesting mix which sort of like keeps evolving we jam on songs a lot and like that's how we finish songs and i and i feel like that approach yeah uh, that approach is kind of like uh, kind of fun and kind of like jazz in that way where it uh, you know we have like million versions of the same songs so <laughs> <laughs> very cool <laughs> yeah just just a bunch of classical music a and, bunch of uh, classical music yeah i guess also <laughs> the first ever song i learned how to play was a nirvana song so i guess nirvana that's future. That's i just saw the foo fighters the other night which is <laughs> not nirvana exactly but it's close to <laughs> also not, not the same at all <laughs> definitely not yeah. it's kind of the in fact i think foo fighters have turned into the opposite of nirvana but there you go <laughs> that's just my opinion uh, anyway uh so you, you guys um, uh mentioned um films and bollywood and all and i was watching the the video for we're we're getting married i see there's a poster of a film in the back called baskat ke rat if i'm anywhere close to saying that it's which is apparently an old film from about 1960 a classic film so how do film why that film in that video and film and music in general how did it affect you shot that uh, i shot that in a friend's house in berlin right yeah he's got a indie file okay. and he just he just had it uh, on his wall um and uh, yeah just decided to put it there um because it looked nice <laughs> it did look nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> there was much, there wasn't much if any thought given to that at the moment oh, okay all right Um, but generally uh, generally at least the videos uh, yeah because at least i i also uh, i have a film making background oh okay yeah i actually studied music for a few years uh, i'm sorry i studied film making for a few years um and initially thought i wanted to be a filmmaker um I still kind of do i guess yeah. but uh, that, <laughs> still yeah, time but I yeah still time. <laughs> um but managed to just use all those sort of energies and for music videos and stuff like that so and i think it just plays out in the way uh, some of the music is crafted and the albums are crafted to make it sort of a more i don't know a narrative not necessarily like a obvious narrative but right there's this sort of like a uh, larger than life cinematic idea behind a lot of music mm-hmm. which is what it can sound like so maybe that that's sort of how film ended up Gotcha. Being part of it, you know. And as a band, how does the group make musical decisions or any decisions? Actually, is there a lot of? Is there an obvious leader, or is it a democracy? Is there a lot of arguing, uh, or are you guys pretty much on the same page? Because you, you, with all the different types of music and the different places you play, there's got to be decisions that need to be made. I think I think it's song to song. Yeah. Yeah. We generally let the songwriter have some sort of uh, dictatorship in terms of at least what direction they want the music to go in, and then uh, you know just try to sort of fill it up and then reject, accept, and slowly, like very slowly, very very slowly, move towards uh, what we think we can all sort of be happy, be be at peace. with the uh, or playing live and sort of having to listen back to it for the rest of our lives. So yeah, fair <laughs> yeah that's a... So with that in mind, you have a t- track called uh, Where the Money Flows, which has some nice it sounds like bird song at the beginning and maybe a xylophone or something, but it also sounds like the vocal was uh, affected maybe like a vocoder or something like that. So uh 
Was there a lot of discussion about how that vo voice was treated? Um, people have opinions about things like that, and some some would say, "Oh no, we don't want to hear that." And I see it spinning. And I see the spinning. Oh. And I see the I guess it only happens for one portion of that song in the middle. Um, right. And <laughs> yeah, I don't. I guess it was a, that. That might have been a quite a. Mm, mm, I can't remember whether it was popular or not. Uh, but <laughs> within us, but right. Yeah, it was. It was in the moment kind of thing. I think. I think it just felt like the song needed some sort of change. Right. Uh, uh, in some sort of way, and it felt like one of the possibilities. Yeah, I don't think we care too much about how people would receive the song necessarily we definitely we try to pay attention to whether the, like the song is accomplishing what we wanted to do for right. if it's a dance song it should make people dance right at the very least if it's a you know it's a ballad it should make people have some sort of something i don't know cry or some shit um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that's. I think that's the. That's just about what we try to do with the music. But beyond that, I don't think there's any sort of like, hey, audience, tell us what you really want, kind of yeah. thing going on. You know. So, so what kind of audience do you have? Is there a, do you do you notice that there's a type of a music fan that um, is appealing to the band or likes the band, or do you got a random group of folks that just check you out and see what it's all about? Um, I think it's pretty random at the moment. Uh, it tends to be uh, like variable to, right. to a certain level. Yeah. And and do you talk to them after the gigs? Do you kind of get get to know who's who's following you guys around? Um, we do. We tend to go out to smoke cigarettes. So. <laughs> All right. A lot of people. <laughs> I'm not recommending that. I'm a fervent anti-smoker myself. <laughs> but you gotta do what you got to do, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, what do you do when you come to a country like New Zealand, where you haven't been, to find out about the country? Do you watch the television, go out and walk around in the streets? Uh, how do you uh, explore? Oh, um, yeah, I think it's sort of stepping out of the house and like some word of mouth suggestions. That's nice. Also, we've only really been to Raglan so far with regards to New Zealand. <laughs> right. so you can surf. Yeah. Can you surf? Uh, I got no. I I don't think any of us surf, but you want to. Sound engineer surfs. Oh yeah, sound engineer. Watch oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm from I'm from upstate New York in the United States. So we don't do a lot of surfing up there either. So <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> so, and what we'll kind of what do you know about New Zealand music? Um, I personally love this one artist called Conan Moccasin. Oh yeah, we know. Yeah. Him. He's great. I mean, beyond that, I haven't heard much from New Zealand, but yeah. I can't remember any New Zealand artist, actually. I mean, have you heard Crowded no, House, house <laughs> Split Ends? Uh... <laughs> yeah, no. Don't look too good after that. Uh, I don't know, actually. I can't name a single Kiwi artist I know. Okay. Other well, than Adam Mokassan. Okay. We got a pretty good scene, so that's something for you to do when you get here, or what? what while you're here, <laughs> yeah. And and is there? So you guys are from Delhi. Is there what kind of music scene is there there? Do you fit into it, or are you apart from everything else? Is, is are there other people doing similar things? Right. Um, no, I I think we don't fit in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, that that's uh I think like uh, it's it's evolving, but generally it's not been a very big music scene. Uh, I would say probably right now we have the most sort of cohesive or coherent scene we ever had, which would be hip hop, which is specifically like what we call desi hip hop, which means Indian hip hop. Yep. 
I'd say that's that's the biggest thing right now. Uh, and we probably just sort of existed in the bubble, just sort of roaming around time and space in Delhi and India. But yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, so you're going to be here in Auckland in uh, a couple of days. You're playing at the neck of the woods, I believe it is, which is a yeah. little club on K Road. So uh, uh, there, the K Road is uh, like the hip jumping place in in the middle of the city. Like Are you familiar way. with the Maori language? Have you, have you heard much of that? You then, know how to say hello at this point, I think. That's a uh, kiori, right? Yeah, well, you're getting there. Kia ora. There <laughs> it kind of sounds a little bit like this Indian dialect, but, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a very musical language. Yeah. So I remember seeing something which said Papa Toto. I just remember that. Okay. That's... You're getting the hang of it. <laughs> Not bad for one day. <laughs> I've been here forty years or thirty years, and I can't speak it. So, <laughs> good time, I guess. <laughs> Very good. All righty. Well, I'll let you guys go and have your breakfast, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys when you get here in, up in Auckland in a couple of days. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day.